Right, hello there and welcome to uh, part two, or, or lesson two, of uh, our look at uh, energy at Key Stage 3, uh, part of the science course. So as we look with the lesson one, it was obviously about the basics of energy types. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at the uh, energy transfer diagrams. Now uh, you'll see these through uh, most of the textbooks that you will uh, come across at Key Stage 3. It also goes into Key Stage 4 and you'll see them all the way up through A level as well. So let's have a look. So what is our basic uh, energy transfer diagram? Now what it shows us uh, is where our energy source comes from, uh, how that energy source is transferred, and what is the resultant or the receiver of that energy source from there. Now they all basically around this kind of structure. So if we have a look one, what we've actually got here, so obviously what we've got here is a diagram of just a really simple circuit. Um, so we've got our power source here, going into our light bulb, going back to our power source. So it's just a simple electricity circuit. Now down here is what we have is our energy transfer diagram. So what it shows us is obviously at the beginning, like I said, we've got our power source from our battery. Now it's transferred as electrical energy. If you remember from lesson one, obviously we discussed uh, the different types of energy there are, and electricity, electrical energy is one of those. So this electrical energy then goes into the lamp. This lamp then transfers this energy again into light energy, another one of the types of energy that we discussed in lesson one. Now this light obviously then transforms itself and goes into the surroundings. Now this diagram here actually only shows us the thing that we call useful transfer. So this is actually what we actually want to do is our electricity is going into the lamp. The main thing we want from our lamp is light. So that is the useful transfer. But as you will find out that no process is 100% efficient or one, not everything that we want it to go in will make that light. So obviously we have useful transfer, so the opposite with that would obviously be non-useful transfer. So this next diagram is obviously going to show us where our non-useful transfer comes in. So again, we've obviously we've got our power source here from our battery being transferred into electrical energy into our lamp. So our useful transfer, as we mentioned just before, is being transferred into light energy. So that's the stuff that, that we want. But also, moving down here in our diagram is our non-useful energy transfer. And this, in this case, in the lab, it's being transferred into thermal energy. Again, if you're not sure what this thermal energy, light energy, electrical energy, if you go back to lesson one, have another quick look at that, and then come back here, and obviously we'll find that you'll have a much better idea of what we're talking about here. So what's coming down here in thermal energy is our non-useful energy transfer. Now, this is obviously not, it's not wasted energy, you can't destroy energy, but this is not what we actually want from the system. So the more energy that we can get to come over here to do our light, to be transferred into light, the better that the energy we're putting in is being used for the source of, of what we actually want it for. Okay, so this is just basic energy transfer diagrams. Um, again, if you're not happy with that, just, ha I know, just take your time, just have a look again. We're going from energy source, being transferred into electrical energy, in this case, just for our lamp. And then this is split into both useful and non-useful energy. Okay, so energy transfer is not always, it's not always electrical, it's not always to do with circuits. You know, they, energy transfers are just as much as part of biology as they are of physics, as they are of chemistry. Okay, so in this case, our energy transfers, we're tracing it all the way back to the sun. So obviously we have the sun, we have photosynthesis, which makes our plants grow. So that's the, the initial energy that we have in there. Now the herbivores or our insects, you know, they, they, they eat the plants, so therefore the energy that was stored in the plants from photosynthesis is then moved on to the insects. Now, this again isn't going to be 100%. The 100% of the energy from the sun is not going to go directly into our insects because the plant would have used some of that energy itself to grow. So therefore, you know, we have a percentage or a certain amount of that energy would have been passed on to the insect. Okay? So then from there, the next step up would have been from our, from our herbivore insect into our carnivore, say, I don't know, maybe a small mouse or something like that. That would then eat the insect, but again, the insect itself would have used some of that energy. So therefore, only a small amount of that energy would consequently be passed on to the carnivore. Now this is exactly the same the further and further up we go to the, end, up the food chain. So the initial energy source down here will be much, much smaller by the time it gets to the the, the top animal within the food chain. 
because there will always be some lost because the individual animals would have used it for growth, they would have used it to breathe, they would have used it for movement. Okay? So there's another thing for energy transfer diagrams, and these things are called Sankey diagrams. Um, most prize prize, they're called Sankey diagrams because the person who created them was called Sankey. Okay? So these diagrams you can see very different to the uh, traditional energy transfer diagrams that we've been looking at before. Now, what we're going to do is exactly the same uh, principle as to the energy transfer. So we're going to take, for example, that we're taking an energy source and we're trying to light a light bulb. Okay? So what this actually has here is there's a section here for electrical energy. So this is our power source. Now, this is mentioned, uh, this is given the value of 100 joules. Now, joules is just a unit uh, of energy. Um, don't worry about that too much at the moment. We're going to cover that uh, in the following lectures in heat and temperature. So don't worry about that too much. Don't worry about joules too much. Just, just think, take the value of 100 for now. Okay. So as this energy moves forward, this again shows us our useful, uh, sorry, our useful uh, energy transfer and our non-useful energy transfer. Okay. So again, this is our light bulb. So our light energy here has taken 10, okay? And our non-useful energy, which has come out as heat, has taken 90. So these two numbers, or the consequence coming from here, will always add up to the original energy source that went in, okay? So in this case, you know, only 10 of 100 that's coming in is actually being used as useful energy. 90 of the 100 is actually being lost well, not lost, but being used as non-useful energy coming off the lamp as heat. Okay? So this is just a normal, standard, 60 watt light bulb. Just the, the traditional, you know, I've got a bright idea light bulb coming out the top of my head. Now this is the new kind of energy efficient, the little coily light bulbs that you see. Okay? Again, 100 coming in. What I've got here is our useful energy coming out of this side. In this case, it's 75 and our non-useful energy coming down the bottom, in this case, which is 25. So as you can see, 75 out of 100 this time is being used as useful energy, whereas 25 of it, only 25, is being used up as non-useful energy. So obviously this kind of light bulb is much more efficient, much better at using the energy that it's got coming in for the purposes that we actually want it. Okay? So, those are the two basic types of uh, energy transfer diagram that you'll come across in Key Stage 3. Um, so, as you said, energy transfer diagrams show us the direction of energy and the flow in the system and how the energy itself is transferred. Uh, also, energy, you know, energy transfers occur in almost everything. You know, uh, I'm transferring energy from holding this paper, I'm transferring the energy by letting it go. You know? As we discussed in the first lecture, I have potential energy by holding it in my hand. So this has potential energy right here. It has gravitational potential energy. By letting go, I'm releasing that potential energy into kinetic energy. So it's moving. But it's not always going to, not all of the energy is going to be transferred because there'll be some lost to wind and so forth. But again, don't worry about that. We will come to that in future lessons. Okay? Uh, so Sankey diagrams show how the energy is split up in between useful and non-useful uh, transfers, as well as normal energy transfer diagrams do as well. Uh, and also, you know, we've had a very small introduction into uh, energy saving and efficiency, uh, just with those two Sankey diagrams, um, showing how the, m the more modern light bulb is obviously more efficient, uh, more energy saving, because it uses more of the total energy coming in for the actual purpose that we want it. And that's the end of uh, today's small lesson. So my name's Ian McDowell, um, I'm a student at Bond University. Cheers, thank you.